From Hallis Hall and Lake Forest, welcome into another edition of Bears All Access. It's brought to you by IGS Energy. Wishing you a pleasant good evening with my broadcast partner from News Radio 780 and 105.9 FM WBBM, Chicago Bears Super Bowl winner Tom Thayer. I am Jeff Joniak. We made it to the finish line of the fans slash media portion of training camp. It wrapped up uh, this morning with a full padded practice, and now these guys will get into their cocoon a little bit, Tom, after the game against Tennessee on Saturday, and then they will just focus on getting themselves right and ready for September 12th against the L.A. Rams. Yeah, you know, as serious as the beginning of training camp is for every single guy that has an opportunity to earn a position, it even gets more serious after the weekend's game uh, against Tennessee. So you kind of go through the cuts, then you kind of look at around the locker room and you're going wow I used to sit around here and look at 90 <laughs> guys with a, a bunch of trainers and a bunch of guys assisting on the practice field and now it seems like a small group of, of players and uh, supporting staff so it is a different vibe around here starting um, the regular season preparation coming up in the show in our next segment and the next one after that Roquan Smith the Bears inside linebacker be uh, quickly emerging as one of the faces of this team right now. And thanks to our producers, Dan Borelli, Jordan Treadup, Katie Tuber, and the folks at The Score. We're going to have this game for you. Bears and Titans, Saturday, 6 o'clock in Nashville. Complete coverage on WBBM starting at 5 o'clock with the pregame show, 6 o'clock the kickoff. And this man, Justin Fields, the rookie out of Ohio State, will get the start. Yeah, I think, you know, that's the, one of the biggest parts, just, you know, playing and finding that rhythm. Um, I'm going to approach this game like I've approached the last two games. So, I'm um, just, you know, getting in the ball game, uh, moving uh, the ball down the field and, you know, trying to score a touchdown every drive. I'm sure he's very excited, Tom. Yeah, but key phrase there is rhythm. That's what you need to find. You know, when you're leading a, a troop out there of offensive football players, a rhythm is the consistency of how you get in and out of the huddle, what you see at the line of scrimmage, the play you call, and how you're gonna. It's going to be determined to be successful uh, across the line of scrimmage against a really good defense. So, if Justin can go out there and find rhythm with his teammates, I think that's a huge accomplishment. Man, Nagy this week uh, spoke often about Justin Fields and how it's all going to. Look out and as the season unfolds he made it clear be on guard you got to be ready to go you have to prepare as if you're the starter and and then when you are the starter there's no change and Justin is locked in this kid is very focused he's all in he's selfless uh he he's just he's doing really really well right now and we like where he's at you know, and this is what I think you have to do. But, you know, physically you have to be ready. You know, you have to stay sharp mentally. But you got to be prepared emotionally from when your time is called that you're ready to go in there. It's not something that you need a week or a series or a couple plays to get acclimated to what you're going to go in there and face. It's about being prepared as a starter, even though you're not the first guy on the field. Yeah, and some of that is how you interact with your teammates, whether it be the last guy on the roster or one of the main guys, the starters, uh, for Justin Fields, and Matt Nagy told a story last week that caught everybody's attention. Usually that's a pretty good matchup with Jimmy out there, one-on-one. -on -one. I think all of us would maybe throw him the ball and uh, <clears throat> one high safety. Justin was out there, and, and he went the other way. He didn't throw it to him. So in the middle of practice, Jimmy came over to me, and he's like, he, he told me, he said, uh, hey, man, you know, when I'm over there, you give me that ball. You know, you throw me the ball. And so when we were in meetings yesterday, we, we were telling the quarterbacks, hey, listen now, guys, you got a guy at tight end now. He wants that ball. When you got a number 57 on him, he wants that ball. And so the quarterbacks took it in, and they were just kind of – so we get to dinner last night, and Jimmy and Justin are crossing paths, and Justin walks by and tells Jimmy, he says something to me, other facts. He's like, hey, man, when you're out there, you, you got to get open. You know, and, and Jimmy just looked at him and was just, this little young buck just tell me to get open? And, and uh, Justin just walked away and just had the biggest grin on his face as he said it. So, like, that kind of stuff, you build that rapport. You know, Justin is doing that, and now when he gets with a guy like that, Justin knows, okay, now I just learned. I'm going to give him a chance. When he's covered, he's uncovered. And so, like, those are the little stepping stones that you build rapport with those guys, and it's it's like that with Andy, too, and, and Nick. So, I mean, that's kind of where we're growing. And, and that really is critical aspect of this too is Andy Dalton still learning his guys in the same fashion he's got a lot more experience with that obviously over 11 years but these next two weeks for Andy Dalton are going to be extremely important to continue that chemistry with guys like Allen Robinson who says there is chemistry with this guy we'll hear from Allen in our show today as well um, and then some of the newbies uh, you know that are coming into the mix 
that they have not had a lot of time together. Guys like Marquise Goodwin and Demir Bird, uh, Darnell Mooney obviously has, uh, and the tight ends, the running backs. It's all on the table here. You know, th- that word rhythm that Justin talked about, it's not only in the games, it's also in practice. When you si- you find that flow with all the new personnel that you're talking about that Andy's going to have to get acclimated to, that's part of that rhythm that you develop to take it out on the field. And with all due respect to Jimmy Graham, this is going to be an offense that's run how the quarterback sees it, both Andy Dalton, Justin, and Nick Folds. So whatever happens during the course of a play, yeah, you can go back and make a suggestion hey I'm open but again respect the quarterback's decision and how they see the defense according to the plan can't miss him though same story if he he does in fact become a member of the of the roster and I think he will Jesse James six seven bodies both of them all right so there's an exclamation point on this portion of the preseason Matt Nagy on the overall success at camp but overall it's been a a very focused business-like approach to where we're at Uh, I think that we've had a good balance uh, in most areas of the callousness that we look for to get them tougher, but be smart and not get to the point where you get guys hurt. So we're, you know, so far we're there. One thing he wishes were different though from the preseason. Just juggling that balance of probably more specifically offensively with some of those wide receivers and, and the timing with Andy, trying to see where that's at. And, you know, in the in the preseason stuff for those first couple quarters is probably the, the biggest thing where, um, You'd like to maybe get just a few more reps with them, but it didn't, and it was more about balance of injury, which is, you know, pretty, you know, for me, it was something that I just wanted to make sure that we, we protected. And that's always a head coach's uh, role in the preseason, obviously. You don't want to have a, a completely wiped-out football team injury-wise. But, again, that's something we just touched on. The timing will come. Now, Tom, in terms of what to expect for personnel for this final game, here it is from the head coach. Well, now you're, I think you're going to probably see – Half the coaches are going to play their starters for a quarter, quarter and a half. The other half are going to pull their guys and no one's going to play. But then what's going to happen in week one is the teams that win, every one of them are going to be geniuses because they sat their guys or because they didn't play, because they played their guys because they look good. So that's just how it goes. But we're, uh, we want to, we want to go out and play hard and have fun. It's listen, you got to do what you do as a head coach in order to put the most confident team out there week one because this is a new preseason. These three preseason games and then having that two weeks before the start of the regular season, to me, I don't like the fact of giving guys three weeks off before the regular season begins because, listen, Coach Dickey used to say it to us repeatedly, you just can't turn the switch on and off. Once you turn that switch on when the season begins, it has to stay on until the end of the year. Well, it's been on for Roquan Smith from the moment the offseason began as he recovers from injury. He is ready to go. A pectoral injury that ended his season last year, didn't get to play in the playoff game. He has been rocking and rolling. We'll hear from him coming up next here on Bears All Access. With Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. It's brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Welcome back to Bears All Access. It's brought to you by IGS Energy. Choose clean energy for your home at IGS.com because every good choice adds up to a better world. With Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Pleased to be joined by Roquan Smith, the Bears starting inside linebacker, ready to break out. You hear that a lot. I know you think that a lot. Your teammates are talking about you this way. You've heard it from them. We just heard from Danny Trevathan earlier today. It's all about your mindset, he says. And uh, would you say that's the proper way to frame where you're about to go here in 2021? I would agree with that. It's all about the mindset because I feel like with the mindset, everything starts with your mindset. And 90% of it is mental, and I feel like the other 10 is physical. So the mindset is definitely in a a good spot right now. How did you get it there? How did you get that? Just learning to control the things that I can control, uh, honestly, and just giving my all each and every day and trying to just like get better mentally at things that I wasn't quite wasn't probably good enough at. But now it's just seem all of it's coming together and it just feels like it's a good feeling for sure. Did I read that you were snubbed from the NFL top 100? I think I did. And, you know, is that fuel for the fire? (laughs) <laughs> uh, you know, every, everything's fuel. You know, there's nothing better than being counted out. You know, like, you know, when you're counted out, when you come, most people don't see you coming. But, hey, I think most people know. But at the end of the day, I'll continue to show them. Yeah, you know, even when the Bears did their top 100, I, I always used to see where I, where I was on it. And, you know, it is. It is something that's in the back of your mind every time that you're, comp- you're a competitor. Where'd you land? I forgot. 
84. One above, Number 84? One above Jay All Cutler. Time. That's, that's what I always All say. All time. That's impressive. So um, the Dolphin experience, um, you know, because we talk about training camp. We're here every day. We kind of watch what you guys practicing against yourselves. How do you like that experience in training camp now that they're shortened a little bit by because of the three preseason games? But how do you like that work with an opponent? Uh, that work is great uh, going against another opponent because week in and week out, you're going against your guys. You get tired of just hitting on your guys, so you want to show your moves off to a new opponent, uh, get good work against other guys because there's other good guys around the league, so there's nothing wrong with working, and I enjoy it. Can you work on something different? Because it seems like practice is the only time that maybe it's your vision, maybe it's a move, maybe it's the way you disengage from a blocker. Do you think that you can work on things easier because the opponent, the guys that you're practicing against, the Bears that you practice against every day, they know you, you get to know them, but now you're facing an opponent that you don't know and they don't know you very well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that'd be the best because, like, even your slightest moves, they haven't seen them. So it works pretty good as opposed to when you're going against your guys, they've seen it many days. So it's like, okay, they're sitting here waiting <laughs> for that as opposed to the other guys they are not. Roquan Smith, our guest here on Bears All Access. It's brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score with Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak. You, you alluded to things you weren't maybe good at before. Because you came game ready to play out of Georgia. You were ready to play a plug-and-play player who could do a lot of things. In retrospect, where do you think you weren't as good as you are now? I would say uh, route recognition uh, and play recognition. I felt like I knew some things, but like right now I feel like I'm a step above I've, than I've ever been right at this point right now in my career. And it's only going to get better from here. So I feel like I'm trending in the right direction as far as that aspect. Probably a silly question, but th does it allow you to trigger quicker? You know, oh, absolutely. It allows you to play even faster. So knowing what's about to come before it comes, give you even a more of a head start. Now, because they watch you on tape, I'm talking about your opponents and coaches. So if you're flying to the ball and you're flying to the gap where you need to be, you're dropping where you need to be, you're anticipating, as you say, route recognition and coverages. Do you have to now be careful that they don't throw you a change up, a curveball? to get you going in the wrong direction because you've been so good at figuring things out. Oh, absolutely. At the end of the day, play recognition, that's pre-snap, but that's one second before the snap, and it's post-snap too, so what they're doing. I'm more so going to still react, but I'm going to have an idea of what they're doing, and if they give me something different, I'll be prepared for it. 139, 4, and 2. 139 tackles, 4 sacks, 2 interceptions. What number do you think that can rise the most as you mature and you start – understanding the opponents and the offenses they throw at you. As any of those numbers, do you feel that they can rise more than the other? Oh, yeah. I feel like they all can uh, rise. You know, even tackles, I felt like I probably missed like probably eight or nine or something in the season. If I can get those, that can rise. You know, uh, TFLs, I feel like that can rise. It was pretty high. Sacks, you know, get more opportunities. I feel like that can rise. And then with my uh, play recognition, I feel like picks can rise more because being in the right place at the right time. What does Sean offer? Is Sean Desai, your new defensive coordinator, a little bit of Vic, a little bit of Chuck, you know, and now a lot of Roquan. What does Sean offer you in this style of defense? And uh, is he picking your brain to see what fits you most comfortably? Oh, absolutely. He gives all his players, let them uh, figure out, figure what, whatever they're best at. He try to put them in the uh, best situation to succeed and give you a lot of opportunities to make plays on the ball. So you have to respect the guy that's trying to put the guys in the best possible situation. So I'm a big fan of it. But on the Bears website and in the day in the life of Roquan Smith, I didn't see any pictures of you and Sean there. I saw all your different activities that you do during the course of the day, and you got a lot going on inside this facility. It's a, it's a great spot to have a, a football day, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's a tremendous spot to uh, have a football day. And I feel like, yeah, with him enough out on the field, chatting with him, <laughs> right. and then in the meeting rooms, he'd come in. It was just he was left out on a couple of the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that brings up a good point because – Really, from the day the offseason program started, and you were coming off an injury, so you had a rehab and whatnot, so you were here in the offseason, you kind of poured yourself into this organization. And you really have been that way the whole time. But this year in particular, is that a, another sign of where you're at? And you're becoming a face of the franchise. And whether you realize it, it's intentional or it's not intentional, your leadership May not be a guy who's going to be yelling and screaming on the field at guys, but it's in other ways. You're, you're walking that right now. Is that, was that intentional? 
I would think that I think more so just maturity, uh, and I think that just comes with time. And I feel like knowing things and then knowing your guys better than you've known them before. So I felt like with time, that just gives you those type of opportunities to where as you can get in, you can interact with the guys in different ways that you may have not before, you may haven't before. So I think that's big. And then just knowing what to do and when to do it, and I think that's it's, it's a great recipe. You know, I didn't see that video that Tom, Tom did, so a day in the life of Roquan Smith. Things like that, that that the organization asks you to do, and some guys aren't willing to do that, or some guys don't really get into doing that. Uh, is that something you've become more comfortable with over time? You've always been very available, you know, to the media and so forth, but will that allow you to connect better with not only your teammates, because guys, guys watch that stuff, I know they do, and with the community and, and with the Bears fan base overall, because this is linebacker heaven a little bit in this franchise. So, you know, you got, and, and I think you're really starting to, to take that place. Oh, absolutely. And it's big. You know, I'm, I'm not a big guy that more so I'm not a guy that, you know, love the spotlight and everything like that. But, you know, I enjoy being out uh, with my teammates, doing different things with them, showing the fans, you know, who I am. But it's kind of hard when you like try to avoid the spotlight, don't want all the attention. But when you get it from time to time, you just learn to accept and embrace it because there are so many individuals that would die to be in this position. So I just have to sit back and just think, wow, man, I'm tremendously blessed. I think of him. I think it th- the guy I'm pointing at right now, Tom Thayer, because I started covering the Bears back in 85, which is the year they won the Super Bowl, and he was on that team. And talk about a guy. Th- th- that team could not avoid the spotlight because they were rock stars. But it was a different era also. And, and guys like him were grumpy. I mean, he was just – it was all about ball. And if microphone coming his way, you're going the other way because it wasn't it, – but, you know, sometimes, Tom, the spotlight just gets to you. You can't, you can't avoid it because you're in this profession, you're in this town with that logo, with this fan base that just organically loves the Chicago Bears and loves football, and it means everything to families like your very own family. I mean, how, how would you – explain what that's like for for a younger player in this town even though they'd like to keep to themselves and sometimes it's unavoidable I I think it's more difficult for you guys because you're never out of the spotlight because of social media we never had social media we didn't have cell phones we didn't have people taking pictures as you're walking down the street or going into a restaurant so actually we had it a little bit easier than I, I think you do and I don't know if you embrace social media I'm not into it um, you know, yeah, I kind of, I'm a football player and that's what I do during the football season. And the other thing I just consider distractions. Absolutely. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm a huge social media guy. You know, I do it a good bit just to, you know, engage with the fans, show the fans, you know, a little bit of who I am, but yeah, I'm not a huge guy that just want everything to be, Oh, look at me, look at me. I'm like, right. that's not me. But you are a quote machine. You're, 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 it's about inspiration. Where are you drawing these quotes? Where are you getting them? Uh, sometimes it used to be my neighbor. My neighbor used to just send them to me uh, often. Sometimes I would just, you know, go over uh, social media looking at, like, different quotes. Feel like, you know, because people can always use those quotes uh, and always, you know, inspire people. And some people was looking forward to those each and every day. And, you know, I enjoy helping people any way I can. And I know a lot of fans used to tune in just for that as well. So send some of those to Tommy and I. We can use them, too. <laughs> We're going to take a break. One more segment to go with inside linebacker Roquan Smith here on Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. The Chicago Bears, one of the teams in the Chicago Sports Alliance, are supporting Ready, Chicago's gun violence reduction efforts. Learn more at heartlandalliance.org slash Ready with Roquan Smith, Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. Glad to be with you here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score, would you say this portion of training camp, which is now officially over as of today with the fans and media watching practice, did you think the team accomplished what it intended to, what Matt Nagy laid out from that very first team meeting? And then if so, how, how does it fit for you as well? Uh, yeah, I think we accomplished a lot of uh, this training camp. I felt like uh, gave a good show to the fans. I felt like we came out and got better each and every day. Uh, I feel like some days, you know, there was a day or two what you know, didn't go our way. But I felt like overall, when you really look at the bigger picture, I felt like we all came out, got better, and we grew as a team. You know, when you get a chance, you get Eddie Goldman back, and then you get a chance to watch the growth of a guy like Blau Nichols. Not so much Akeem because he's a seasoned veteran. But do you have the ability to see the younger guys improve in front of you, whether it's live action when you're standing behind them or when you go back and you review the video and you see the growth and the potential of guys like Eddie and Blau? 
Oh, no doubt about it. You see those guys, like, thinking back to our rookie year, uh, like with a guy like Bilal, you know, we were both rookies, but just seeing things he would do then as opposed to now, it just shows that, like, man, experience, that's the biggest teacher in life, and uh, a lot of guys are just getting better with that. Roquan Smith, our guest here on Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670, the score. So you got a new uh, inside linebackers coach this year. Tell us what it's like with uh, Bill McGovern. He's been around a while. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of years, you know, been more years coaching than I've been alive. So <laughs> Does he let you know that? <laughs> <laughs> he don't let you know because you already know. So yeah. It's kind of like I mean, hey, coach, you know, I've been around a little bit, too. Uh, you know, so did you have that in the meeting room? And, and what's it like in there? And what how is he different? What's he taught you versus what you've had in other inside linebacker coaches all the way back to going back to high school? Oh, uh, yeah, man. I would say he's a tremendous coach, a lot of wisdom uh, with his years uh, of experience. And I would just say he just allows the players just be yourself, you know, and if there's things that he need to correct and coach you up on, he do, do that, but he never try to overcoach you. And he always just try to give you what you need, never too much. So I respect it. And he's a coach that allows you to play. And so that's the biggest thing. I got one for both of you. What do you need from your position, coach? And what do you need from your defensive coordinator? Pretend it's not any anybody by name, but as a player, what do you need? And then you answer it too, Tommy, because what did you need? Go ahead. I would say uh, starting out with the uh, defensive coordinator, I would say, hey, just get me to play and make sure the scheme, you know, the scheme uh-huh. putting us all in the best possible situation. And for an inside linebacker coach, you know, during the week it varies. You know, I would love, you know, the tendencies of different teams uh, and what they like to do in certain situations. And I'm going to pick up on things as, as well for myself, but I would say those are probably two of the biggest things. Well, Roquan said it. When you start picking up things for yourself, my offensive line coach, Dick Stanfeld, you say is, look, I can coach you so much, but eventually you got to start coaching yourself, knowing what you're doing incorrectly and what you know and what you're doing that is instilling the confidence in you to go out there and play. So I think that's what it's about. As you mature, you know, you think of some of the – guys you're around you know Danny Trevathan and Christian Jones and now Alec Ogletree and then Josh Woods and Joel EA Booneyway and stuff even though you're still a young guy all that answer information has to be transferable to all you guys so yeah self-coaching I think is a key ingredient to to growth and really tapping your potential are there light moments does he have ways Bill have ways of inspiring you in different ways or challenging you in different ways other than just going there because you spend a ton of time in the classroom I don't think the average fan realizes how much classroom time is. You know, it's significant. So how does he keep it fresh, and how do you stay awake in those those meetings and, and every day going through the same thing? Take us in there a little bit. I would say it, it goes back to uh, you're never as good as you think you are. So when you're going into those meetings, there is always room for improvement. And, you know, if there is plays, he's going to point it out and let you know, hey, you, that, that's not that's not the way right there and so you know when you hear that over and over that just makes you want to get better each and every day and he's he's he want the best for each and every guy and trying to get you to the level that he know that we all want to be at are, so are you at liberty to debate certain things that happen in a practice or a game like now listen coach now maybe if we look at it this way no yes I don't know uh, it, it depends. I, I normally have a good a good word for some things, like a good comeback, <laughs> but sometimes it just be like, okay, it's just better to be quiet right here because, hey, I don't think I'll win this one. Could you challenge Dick Stanfield? No, no. I mean, it, well, the word's the word. He's a former player, you know. Yeah. He he's he's he's, he's look at the offensive tackles and the centers. They can tell me something about their job, but I played guard and you're a guard, so there's nothing I haven't seen yet that that you know I, I've seen it all already. So, you know. The working atmosphere here at Hallis Hall, last year it was a condensed training camp, and it went by so quickly, boom, you're in Detroit playing week one. How did you like the working atmosphere, staying here at Hallis Hall, being at your locker every day, going to the meeting room that you're familiar with, going to the dining hall area that you know exactly where it is? So how, how was the working atmosphere that was created here at Hallis Hall? I think it was great, and uh, being out at Hallis Hall and everyone, you know, some get to sleep in their own beds. The uh, hotel is right there, uh, facilities right here. So you're here all year long practicing each and every day, so why not just keep it uh, keep it the same? So I'm a big advocate, a big fan of uh, 
staying here, doing everything here, everything we need, the treatment room, everything. So I'm a big fan of with, that. With the separation of the fields, you got one that are right outside the back door of the locker room. You got one that a eh, little over a quarter mile away. Do you golf cart over there or do you walk over there? I golf cart over there normally. Me too. I would too every time, Roquan. <laughs> but I do walk back sometimes, you know, get a walk. If one of my teammates <laughs> hanging out want to chat, you know, Josh normally likes to chat. So I'll chat with him on a walk. He's a dancer. A dancer. Oh, he's, he's he is a dancer, man. <laughs> that guy, I watch him out of practice and he expels as much energy dancing while he's not on the field as he does when he's going he's a, to his He's reps. his own Broadway show, yep. that guy, right? Yes, no definitely. question. Have you ever in your life like, met a guy like that one? Uh, he's, no. he's the life of the party. He's the life <laughs> of the party. I will say – Josh off, Woods, for those who didn't know. Off of the Bears' website, pretty much unanimously amongst everybody on the team, you're the worst dancer. I would probably I, – I wouldn't I, – honestly, as I think about it more, I wouldn't say I'm the worst dancer because I'm sure if you get some of those offensive linemen like yeah, yourself, yeah. you know, yeah. then maybe yeah. we'll see who's the worst. I'm oh, the worst I am. because I've showcased that. <laughs> that other guys shot away from it. You know, is it uh, is this feeling like home now four years in? I mean, does it feel – I mean, I know you're, you're from the South, you're from Georgia. That that means a lot to you. I'm sure you, you have homes down there as well, but – do, do you feel like this is the place you want to be? Oh, absolutely, man. It's a, a tremendous city, a tremendous organization. So I'm a big fan of it. Uh, look out for their people. So I, I love it. You know, great food. That's another thing. So I enjoy <laughs> trying all the restaurants in Chicago. And then it's a good brotherhood here. It reminds me a lot of college, you know, a lot of selfless guys. So I'm a big fan of that, you know, because I want everybody to spread the wealth, everybody to, you know, play good and eat good out there on the field. So um I'm a big fan of that. Myself. You know, the vibrancy of this city, is it attractive to you also? I mean, you grew up, you know, in a, in a farming community. Song. Yeah, a farming community. and like Underground welding. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, so it was like, yeah, it's crazy, man, just thinking about it. I was talking to some people, just knowing coming from a town of like a thousand and some people, like, uh, and then just in a big city like that, you don't even – you don't think about it, but then when you just sit back and think, like, wow, man, I'm in such a great city, and I, look where I came from. Like, it's crazy. Some quick hitters to wrap us up, all right? First person to tell you that pro football was a part of your future. Uh, I heard it in Rick, but what I remember vividly is uh, my high school coach, Larry Harrell. At the end of my freshman year, my springtime, he came in there. He thought I was a lot older than what I was. I'm like, yeah, I'm a freshman, but about to be a sophomore. He was like, wow, man. Like, And then that's when he told me. Okay. Uh, favorite cereal? Favorite cereal. I would oh. say probably Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I didn't expect to hear that one. <laughs> uh, dream vacation spot? Bali. Okay. Yeah, Haven't yeah. been there yet, huh? Haven't been. Indonesia, I want to go, though. Uh, favorite movie? Favorite movie, Forrest Gump, a water boy. <laughs> <It's close. laughs> I like it. And lastly, your favorite musical artist. Favorite, favorite musical artist. I would probably say, I can't be like everyone and just say Drake. So I would say favorite musical artist. I I'm mean, Kane Brown's Brown. got to be in yeah, there. I, say, see, yeah, I took yeah, it out yeah. of your mouth. Yep. Kane Brown, Tommy, country. Yeah, I'm yeah. a big fan of country music because that's why we don't dance. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, all, all you have to do is yeah, exactly, and then exactly. just side to side. Right, exactly. <laughs> I like it. All right, well, and on that high note, Roquan, have a fabulous year. Go make as many plays as humanly possible, and we'll be talking about you in glowing terms along with this entire team. Hope it's going to be fun. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Roquan Thanks Smith, our guest. We'll continue on with Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak. This is Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Bears All Access is brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. Visit athletico.com to request an appointment in clinic or virtually and start feeling better tomorrow. With Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak, as we wind down our preseason version of Bears football getting ready for the opener on September 12th against the LA Rams. We'll turn our attention to that right after Saturday's kickoff. I mean, uh, it, it's going to be an exciting uh, affair. Clearly, there are surprises galore that we'll find out uh, over the course of that week getting ready for the Rams, but there's a lot in between that still has to be sorted out. Cuts coming up, obviously. What that means. Will they be looking to add more depth from around the league with cuts? What kind of practice squad are they going to be putting together? Uh, our guys, like, you know, where is Eddie Goldman at? Yep. That's, that's, that's one right there. Who wins the starting job outside opposite Jalen Johnson? Who's going to be the slot defender? There are leaders in the clubhouse in all those instances. The return game. So, 
for me, this is going to be interesting. Coaches already have a pretty good idea, I'm sure. So does Ryan Pace. But there may be guys out there on other rosters that are getting cut or to be dealt that the Bears might want to look at. Right. I mean, first of all, after the Tennessee game is over, you're going to have to identify what position is are you the thinnest at. And then you're going to have to go around and look at all the cuts around the league and see if there's a guy that can come in here and fit into your program. Is there a guy out there that has experience as a punt returner that maybe can give you a little bit more ball security? And if the special teams don't play better in the in the Tennessee game, are there special team aces out there that you could bring in here and it could immediately increase the value of that portion of your roster? So the Bears did hold the, their last open to the public practice uh, earlier today uh, and really not till next year. So, But uh, the impressive thing, more than 1,000 military members, Tom, and first responders here today. Yeah, you know, I laugh at the last preseason uh, training camp practice because I know back <laughs> in our day we would have to beg guys to come to practice because you always have had this big party the night before the last training camp practice so I'm actually glad Matt has these guys in full pads they're you know practiced hard they you know go out there and get some really good work in there to help discover that rhythm that Justin and Andy and the rest of the quarterbacks are looking for in this offense all right it's time to go into what I always do uh best camp player most surprises all that so we're going to go down the list here uh alan robinson going to help us out a little bit because from my perspective the guy that's come the furthest to be in the discussion not only just making the roster but being uh somebody that could actually help this football team with big plays and he may have come the furthest given his background what he's gone through rodney adams alan robinson is a big fan Obviously, he has a lot of talent. You know, he was drafted into this league, you know. So, um, again, just him being able to kind of, you know, uh, really improve and, you know, chisel away at some of the things that he did well and really be able to fine-tune his game. You know, he's the person that goes out to the work each and every day. You know, again, and, um, I mean, as training camp goes, we know we all can be tired, fatigue, and stuff like that, you know, but him and the, him and the rest of the group of those guys, you know, have been, have been battling each and every day. Yeah, Tom, uh, so that's my guy, Rodney Adams, for the offense. We're going to do offense, defense, special teams, and that's got number 13 just uh, has has really done a nice job. Heard him at the podium this past week and and just engaging. Loves the moment. Uh, Almost quit the game. Had a lot of tragedy in his life. His mom died in a car accident. He took over the uh, the raising of his brother. Um, Had a baby this past week. A lot to like about this guy. You know, the birth of his new child has been a really motivating force in his life, and he's talked about it, and it's really interesting because when you're kind of a football player, you have blinders on, and that's what you're focused on. He has wider blinders where he's looking at the imp- the importance of outside elements in his life that make football more important for him. All right, so who gets your camp ball offensively? Oh, man, you came right. You know what? I'm going to – listen – and I know it's offensive line, but I'm going to go with Larry Borum. Uh, he's a fifth-round draft choice that I think that could play against the Rams. And I think he could come in here, and if there is fatigue or uh, issue at the tackle position, he could come in and play either side and play it well. Overall, the offensive line will get sorted out. Jermaine Effetti's part of that. Back at practice at right tackle. They'll sort things out at left tackle. And as you talked about in some of our reports on WBBM, the idea of having Jason Peters and Larry Borum rotate in. That was something that Matt Nagy is open to based on the where Peters might be at for week one. But overall, Jermaine Effetti says it'll all happen. We're just excited. Um, we just want to keep getting better every day. Um, you know, it's I'm Mr. Cliche, but I just like to – I know we we just do our work every day and we get a little bit better and uh, – and, you know, now that we're all coming together, it'll be, it'll be really nice these last uh, couple weeks of camp to be able to uh, keep getting better and keep just getting back acclimated to each other and getting ready for uh, the, the last preseason game and the, next regular, the first regular season game. You don't have a long time to get a little better. you got to get a lot better quickly. And that means conditioning. That means getting into your, your tablet so you understand every one of your assignments. I think Larry Borum is the type of guy that could go in and, and maybe run a series for Jermaine Effetti at right tackle and Jason Peters at left tackle, just like I think Alex Bars could go do and, um, and help James Daniels out at the offensive guard position. I need fresh bodies at the offensive line. Every single snap, every single play. Cody White here in 
and Sam Mustafer have been out there every single day, never looking for a veteran day off, never looking to take a period off. So I think those are the good role models right now, this whole line. All right, I'll let you lead off on defense. Who's your guy? You know, I'm going in with – I'm going to go with Alec Ogletree. Because here's a guy that was signed in the course of camp, had an interception day one, interception day two, interception day three. <laughs> here's a guy that's needed to show depth at that linebacker position because as we'll, you know, we talked to Roquan and Danny Trevathan, both of them had just injury issues, not anything that's going to keep them out of action, but you got to get a guy that can step in that place, Christian Jones. But Alec Ogletree is a type of guy that's come in here and you really don't skip a beat with him. I'm going Jalen Johnson because this is a different Jalen Johnson yeah, this year. Yep. He has emerged significantly, not just on the field. His confidence is zooming. He's healthy. He enjoyed the fact that he had a preseason. He's open to doing all the work, and he's really not shying away from what he is. He's the number one corner on this team. He'll be dealing with the number one receiver from every team. I'm not going to lie to you. I've prepared for that my whole life, fighting and going against – Adversity going against hard times, going keep competing in everything I do is something that I've done my whole life being where I'm from. I mean, it's no different now, just going against another human being, competing and playing the game I love. So, I mean, I don't, it's not no pressure I put on myself. It's what I've been doing my whole life on and off the field, just fighting and competing for everything I get. You know, on the last couple of weeks on Bears All Access, having an opportunity to go face-to-face with Jalen Johnson and Darnell Mooney, I'm really excited about the future of some of these key, the key roles that these young guys will have. And it would have been easy to talk about Darnell Mooney as a key figure on offense, just like Khalil Herbert. But I've gravitated towards Larry Borum. And your pick of Jalen Johnson, this guy's an impressive character. He uses his body well. He's in shape. He's physically fit. He's willing to tackle. He's got interceptions during training camp and he could be a key figure in limiting to limiting the most successful receiver of the opponent all right i'm gonna go uh, special teams now it's a hard one obviously because you don't know who the kicker pit returner is going to be what's going to happen with the gunners it's a whole different situation uh i'm going with the undrafted rookie kicker brian johnson that's not to say that cairo santos did not have a good camp he did but this guy He's got a huge leg. He's playing for somebody. I don't know where. I'd love to keep him here just because, but he has been accurate, and he's been great with the distance. Well, I'll go with Kairos. It's the Bears made an investment in having a guy come in here and show that he's a good kicker and that he can be value to other teams. And there's teams out there right now that are searching for Yeah, I don't care about the other teams. <laughs> me, me neither, but if, if, you, if you can go and make an investment in a guy and then all of a sudden now you get value back for him, that, that, could, that could really help you the future of your roster. All right, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. You're not ready for this one, or maybe you are because you know football. But g- well. give me one thing, one thing that you now know about the 2021 Bears that you didn't know before – training camp started the backfield is deep Um, I don't think David Montgomery gets enough credit I think Damon Williams has come in here and he is right on board with all the traits that David Montgomery has shown and Khalil Herbert is a heck of a draft choice all right coming up next we'll be joined by the voice of the Tennessee Titans Mike Keith and we'll discuss what's going on down in Tennessee what are the Bears walking into with the COVID situation with that franchise including their head coach Mike Vrabel this is Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score Welcome back to Bears All Access with Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score, and we're brought to you by IGS Energy. Pleased to be joined by the voice of the Tennessee Titans, our good friend Mike Keith. How you doing, brother? It is great to be with you, Jeff Joniak. Be looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Uh, you guys got a situation going on down there, though, huh? Yeah, it's been uh, rather wacky uh, because of uh, head coach Mike Brabel coming on his Sunday uh, media conference. It was supposed to be in person, and they said, uh, we're going to do it virtually. And, you know, nobody thought anything about that because we've been doing things virtually for 18 months. And so he gets on and he says, I have to tell everybody uh, I'm positive for COVID-19. He is fully vaccinated. And so he never really felt that badly. He uh, revealed on Tuesday that he did the monoclonal antibody treatment. And I think he feels good now, but he's got to get two negative tests within a 48-hour period before he can return to the building. And so at this point, 
Uh, as we speak right now, uh, we don't think he's coaching the ball game Saturday night unless something changes with the two negative tests. So it has changed our week dramatically. Uh, his first coaching show was Monday night. <laughs> oh, that was great timing. Um, he didn't feel up to doing it that night, uh, and but felt much better on Tuesday. And I did a function with him virtually yesterday for our season ticket members, and he was feeling a lot better. He, I, I knew it because he started giving me a hard time right off the top. <laughs> what are the internal concerns about possible spread? Well, th- that's the thing, because remember last week we were in Tampa. Uh, we spent virtually the whole week in Tampa practicing against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and then played them on Saturday night. And so this was more like a normal training camp situation. I mean, the, the training camps that Tom knew are, are, you know, wildly different than the ones today. But when you go to try, you know, to train with somebody, it's a little more like the old school training camp because you're in closer quarters everywhere in a hotel, you're on elevators, you know, you do go to restaurants together. You ride on buses. Um, they can keep you spread out at your own facility because, you know, that's the design. But when you when you go out of town, it's a little more difficult. And listen, they took a lot of precautions anyway. But um, it just put us in a little bit of a different situation, a little bit of a tighter situation. And so the hope is by really staying on this thing, we don't have an issue. And, and we also have a very good vaccination rate as well. And I think that's something that everyone feels like is a, is a big boost at this time. Let's talk some actual football here now that we got over the COVID issue. <laughs> Tom, so, Tom does not like discussing this stuff. Well, no question. Yeah, well I, there's a lot of questions I have about the Tennessee Titans. You know, the Bears have question marks about the development of their offensive line because they haven't spent a lot of time together. What position on the Tennessee Titans is kind of in the same scenario, that they meet, need more time together in order to get things settled before the regular season? Tom, I'd love to say the offense because A.J. Brown has not practiced a lot. Julio Jones has not practiced a lot. Um, Derrick Henry has been out there every day, but they are not working him a tremendous amount because they're, you know, they're pacing him towards the season. Josh Reynolds, the big signee from the Rams at wide receiver, who's going to be one of the top three, missed some time as well. And four of the five offensive linemen have practiced very little. So this extra week before the preseason or before the regular season starts, sort of that bye week that we're going to have because there's no preseason game number four, that's going to be a real key for us. I I don't know how much they're going to run all those guys out there on Saturday just to get them work based on the fact that several of them are 30 or older. Uh, they've proven themselves. But would I have been thrilled to see them all work together a little bit more in August? Yeah, I would. Do you guys have corner questions? Because we, we have a question mark at one of the cornerbacks um, away from Jalen Johnson, and it seems like I, I've been reading a little bit uh, question marks at the defensive backfield out there. And Are they in a position where they'll be able to settle them, or is this going to be something that's going to be competitive and fluid throughout the season? Well, Tom, you know, we gave up 52% third down conversions last year, which was a record for a team that had that made the playoffs. So that obviously wasn't good. So we have changed three of the four guys in the secondary, and the feeling is we're a lot better. Uh, Christian Fulton's a second-year player. He's playing well. We signed Janoris Jenkins from the Saints, and he's an older player, but he's still a lot of game left. Young guy on the roster – who played at Iowa, Amani Hooker, now in his third year. He's moving into a starting role uh, beside Kevin Byard, who's the only returnee. We drafted Caleb Farley. He was a little bit slow starting because he missed some time recovering from an offseason back surgery, but he's starting to work into the flow. So to answer your question, I think technically, yes, we still have questions in the secondary. We feel like it's considerably better. We're, we're faster, we're more athletic, uh, but until they see it against Kyler Murray in week one and Russell Wilson in week two, I think the questions will persist. Mike Keith, our guest here on Bears All Access, the voice of the Tennessee Titans. From your perspective in a preseason finale like this one, 
and a rookie quarterback that was drafted in the top 15, in this case, number 11. Are you excited as a play-by-play guy to look at Justin Fields in a starting role? Absolutely. You know, I, I know the Justin Fields story from his time at Georgia, followed his recruitment. Remember when he was committed to Penn State, and then he goes to Georgia to play behind Jake Fromm, and uh, then he leaves and goes to Ohio State. And, and certainly that's a storyline for us coming into this game to see somebody with his mobility, because as I mentioned, guess who we get in weeks one and two? Murray and Wilson. So uh, this this defense has been good in the preseason, even though both of our games have been backups against backups. What we have thought about it, though, is the athleticism that I referred to earlier, which seems to be improved, the speed that seems to be improved, but more specifically, the communication. I think everybody feels like this, uh, defense is on the same page. Uh, mobile quarterbacks test that, and that will be an interesting look for them going into this game. So, yeah, I'm tickled to death we're going to see. Like we got a run. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Mike Keith, the veteran voice of the Tennessee Titans, our guest here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score, that's going to wrap us up tonight. For Top There, I'm Jeff Joniak. Thanks to Roquan Smith, Dan Barelli, Jordan Treadup, and Katie Tuber, and the folks at The Score. Appreciate you all for listening. This is Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The Score. Good night.